Hey guys, Ray here with Horticulture Geek. I hope you are having a great day today while you're watching this video. Um, today we are going to be looking at pruning a crepe myrtle tree. Um, these are hugely popular, especially in the south. Um, I know some of you up north may not have very much experience with them, but down here in the south, the crepe myrtle tree really is a tried and true landscaping staple. Um, lots of people have them. Um, and unfortunately, lots of people don't know how to prune them. We actually call it crepe murder here. Um, so if somebody incorrectly prunes a crepe myrtle, um, that's our little joke. We'll say, oh, they crepe murdered over there. So it's just kind of funny um, because a lot of time people plant the crepe myrtle in a spot where it's destined to have problems because in our minds we want this cute little bush tree that we picked up at the garden center or at the big box store and we throw it in the landscape right next to the house right next to the front door somewhere like that and we just want it to stay that way and so inevitably what happens is people start, when it starts growing, because a crepe myrtle, uh, inevitably what happens is people start pruning it because crepe myrtles naturally get 15 to 20 feet tall. That's kind of a big tree. It's a bush, you know, it's not an oak tree like this behind me. And it's not gonna get 50 feet tall like that. But 15 to 20 feet tall is a good sized tree. And people are out here putting these things right up under their house, under the eaves, in the wrong spot. And so you'll see they'll come in every single year and they whack the crepe myrtle back to nubs. That is called crepe murder. If you have that, if you do that, if it works for you, great keep doing it, whatever works for you. But I thought for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly prune a crepe myrtle. So if you have one planted in the correct space and you want to let it grow and give you a full show of what it's supposed to be, there are some tried and true techniques that will let you keep it maintained and pruned up into a beautiful form but still let it grow and give you the height and the flower show that you want to be a stunner in the garden. So I'm gonna set you up on a little stand over here, get at the crepe myrtle and start pruning away at this thing um, and kind of talk you through. It's really not a lot, it's not hard, it's not complicated. Um, and the pruning that we're gonna do on it is just basic pruning techniques that apply to most any plant. Um, so I'm gonna go over here and show you to prune one the correct way. Um, and then I'm actually gonna take you to another one in my landscape that was crepe murdered when we bought the house. Um, so I inherited it as a crepe murder specimen. Um, but I've been working with it and, and I, unfortunately it's, they, I, there's two of them on the front corners of my house. Um, they were planted right on the front corners. So I do have to kind of maintain them a little bit. Okay. So, but this one that's in the backyard, um, it's a newer one. It's not, but six or seven years old and I'm letting it grow. Okay. So let's get over here to this first one and I'm going to show you the proper way to prune a crepe myrtle. See, I've already got this one standardized or trained up. Um, so what I'm gonna do every year is first and foremost, I'm gonna check my trunk structure for any shoots or off branches. And once I find them, I can just pick them right off and get them off the tree, okay? So making sure that no little branches have formed, no leaf buds are coming out, I'm gonna get those off the tree. And then I'm gonna start working up. Um, and so what I'm gonna look for next are cross branches that are going like this one right here for example is pointing into the canopy of the tree and I don't want it to get in here and intermingle and create a spider web so I want to get that out prune it right off this one right here is kind of forming a new branch that'll come out and help with the canopy so I'm gonna leave him and just bring it down a little bit. And then 
step back and looking at the tree, we're gonna look for any other branches that need to come out. So I'm gonna come in here and start working on branches that I feel like need to come out to maintain the canopy of the tree without creating a spider web and a mess of branches. close-up so you can kind of see what I am looking at here so we've got all these little branches these little little spindly twigs that are coming up on here so I'm just gonna come in here and you can literally just pop them right off okay let's just get in here and we clean this up clean this up just get all this little spindly stuff off of here all right and we're looking to have a nice clean, put my hand behind it so you can see, a nice clean branch. Now, what I'm not gonna do, and what you will see a lot of people do when it comes to crepe murder, is they would come in right here and just cut this branch off, right here. Just knock them right off, all along through here to a straight level. That is what's called crepe murder. Now that is easy to do. Because obviously, if I just came in here and went whack, whack 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 you know prune them right through here well then all this work above is gone so yeah it's easy but that's not the right way and it's not going to allow this plant to grow and as you can see this plant is getting some height on it so i want to maintain that height i want to form a canopy here so i'm going to get back at this thing um, let the camera roll and i'm just going to prune it up um, and kind of you just watch what I'm doing and then I'll say some stuff here in a minute. So I've come in and I've got all the little stuff off of it. But you see, I've left the main trunks, the main branches. So let's get right up in here. Let me let that zoom in. If you can see right there above my finger is a bud. So there is a little nub there where new growth is starting to form. I have made an angled cut. There it is. I've made an angled cut right above that bud. That is how you want to prune your crepe myrtle. Most plants, you want to come right below, right above a bud and make an angled cut. All right, so we'll come here. Bud, angled cut. All right, um, so for the sake of boring you, <laughs> I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute work on cleaning this crepe myrtle up and then i'll come back on in a minute once i've got it all shaped up and pruned and kind of show you the end product but at this point what i want you to think about is this is that sorry there i almost dropped the camera um turn where you can see the tree you want to leave height you don't want to just come in and whack it back to a nub you want to find a good bud on the branch somewhere and cut right above that bud. And you want to do an angled cut 
so that water or moisture doesn't set on top of your cut and, and rot out your trunk. Just a slight angle is enough to have water run right off and prevent rot on the bush. So let me keep cutting and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so here is the finished product. So you can see I've gotten everything cleaned up. All the little scraggly little twigs and branches coming off, it's all cleaned up. And then I kind of picked a level where I let them start branching off. And then each one of those branches that I decided to keep have been clean, cleaned up. And then I picked a bud and I trimmed that branch slight angle right above that final bud. Um, so that is really the basic premises of pruning a crepe myrtle properly. You want to leave its height, you want to leave its canopy if it's possible. Now, Again, like I made fun of earlier of calling it crepe murder when you kind of whack them off at a little, little nub. Um, and we can walk out front here in just a second and I'll show you some of my yard where that's been done. But if you have the space to let a crepe myrtle do its natural thing, it's gonna be healthier, it's gonna be thick, it's gonna be beautiful, and it's gonna produce some awesome, big, beautiful crepe myrtle blooms. And crepe myrtles, if you know anything about them, will bloom for a very long time in the summer. Um, and it's just a, it's such a good canopy plant. And now one of the other reasons I like to prune my crepe myrtle this way is because if you are familiar with my channel, I do lots of planting in this garden. And I do edibles and um, just regular botanicals in this garden. The way I have that crepe myrtle pruned with just a regular tree trunks towards the bottom and then letting its canopy be at the top, I use that crepe myrtle as a trellis <laughs> in the summer. Um, I've grown black-eyed Susan vine up that tree. I've grown purple hyacinth bean up that tree. Uh, this year, I think I'm going to grow regular peas up that tree. Um, so if you're in a situation like me, if you have, uh, a landscaped spot in your yard, you have a tree or a crepe myrtle or something, you can absolutely use that as a trellis. Um, I think it looks kind of pretty myself, but it's also utilitarian for me with my setup. I don't have a lot of growing room here in the backyard cause I'm just in a suburban neighborhood. So I use every thing I can think of to use to get more edibles in the garden. Or if you don't interested in, in edibles, like I said, black eyed Susan vines will grow happily up that crepe myrtle. And that is beautiful. So in the dead heat of the summer, you'll have, and this particular crepe myrtle here has a pink bloom on it. So when I did the black eyed Susan vine up it last year, in the dead heat of the summer, I had these beautiful pink crepe myrtle blooms intermixed with these awesome yellow and orange black eyed Susan vine blooms just all over this mass back there. So I thought it was really pretty. Um, let's walk up front and I'll show you. It's, it's traffic y out front, guys. So if you're still with me at this point in the video, just know um, I won't be able to talk too terribly much up there, but I'm going to walk up there and show you um, what I'm talking about with the nubs on a crepe myrtle. All right, so I've got a little break in the traffic here. So you can see this is a much more mature crepe myrtle in my front yard. Now again, I've got him limbed up, but right here, the previous owners prune, 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 prune. So there are nubs there. And that's what you'll see a lot of times. Um, now I obviously have to prune this tree back, but I'm not gonna prune all the way back to those nubs. So I won't prune all the way back to the nubs on that tree. I will prune some of those branches back to that nub just because I really have no choice. At this point, the damage has been done to that tree. It has those growth nubs there. Um, now, there are several branches in that tree that I will leave. Um, but unfortunately for me, like I said at the beginning of this video, that crepe myrtle is really planted too close to the house. And so I have no other choice but to kind of 
crepe murder that tree in order to keep those branches out of my off my roof and out of my gutters uh, and just kind of keep them away from the house so that's that's a yearly battle for me and it may be a yearly battle battle for you and if that's the case then go ahead do what you have to do to keep that plant if that's what you choose to do um, but what well, like I said before if you don't have to crepe murder your tree don't do it um, I hope you found this video a little bit helpful informative maybe you learned something new I know a lot of people just whack a crepe myrtle down like I've talked about to the nubs just because they've seen it done that way and they think that's how it's supposed to be done. But that is absolutely not how it is supposed to be done. Um, so if you can let yours grow, I promise you, you're gonna enjoy the, the display that it will give you when it gets that 15 to 20 feet high. And obviously when it gets 15, to 20 feet high, there's gonna be no cleaning it up and pruning it like I did today. So this intricate finesse detail pruning like I did on mine today, it's just why it's short enough to reach. And then once it gets bigger, I'll keep it maintained up but I don't worry about the top of the canopy. I'll just let it go natural and do its own thing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some information here, something that you can use in your own garden. Um, and until next time, you know, I just hope that you get out there, get in the dirt, do something productive outside, enjoy nature, enjoy life. If you would like to, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. If you like this video, leave a comment below, ask a question below, uh, whatever you feel like, I would love to respond to you. Um, you can also join us on our Facebook page by the same name, Horticulture Geek. And if you want to see new videos as they come out, then you can ring that bell. All right, guys, until next time, from my garden to yours, have a good one.